The whitefly continues to be a major problem across Palm Beach County, and Wellington is no exception. These tiny insects mean big trouble for trees and shrubs. In this video, we'll show you how to spot the pesky insects in your yard. Well, this is a hedge with extreme leaf drop. Unfortunately, this is what hedges look like by the time the resident notices they have a problem. Yellow wilted leaves and sooty mold. Ryan Hopper says South Florida's whitefly problem is to blame. When you see hedges that have damage and leaf drop this severe, it's going to take many, many months for them to look decent again. Adult whiteflies look like very tiny white moths or gnats. Ryan points out two species of whitefly that commonly cause the most damage in Palm Beach County are the ficus and the ragu spiraling whitefly. As its name suggests, the ficus whitefly attacks ficus hedges, while the ragu spiraling whitefly attacks a long list of plants, including gumbo limbo, fruit trees, a number of palms, and ornamental plants like bird of paradise. We're still seeing whitefly infestation across the village with over half the hedges on the major thoroughfares being affected. And we're not talking about a little leaf drop. We're talking about severe defoliation and even complete death of the shrubs, just like you can see here. Once they hatch, the whitefly larvae draw fluids from the leaves. Even if the plant survives the attack, the defoliation lasts several months. Take a look at these leaves. They both have signs of whitefly infestation. Not only do we have eggs laid on the underside of the leaves, but we also have little larvae feeding. On the top side of this leaf, you see some sooty mold. That's actually growing on the excrement of the white flies that were on the leaf above it. Now that you know what to look for, you might be wondering, what do I do to stop it? In our next video, we'll give you tips and expert advice on how to wash out the white fly problem. For our great hometown, I'm Liz Nunez. Looking to make beautification improvements on your home? Wellington's Community Services Department is here to help through the Beautiful Wellington Grant. Up to $1,500 available per address for Wellington property owners. There are requirements. Applicants must provide a minimum of 50% match in funds. Properties must be located in an approved neighborhood within Wellington. If you are an active Neighborhood Watch member, you are eligible for this grant. If you own multiple or attached homes, any and all improvements you make must be uniform. For example, if you own one unit in a quadplex, you and your neighbors must make the same improvements. A uniform look means more curb appeal and could mean increased property value. Here are the eligible activities for the beautiful Wellington Grant. Exterior paint and pressure washing. To ensure a uniform look, paint color must be from Wellington's approved color palette. Pressure washing projects are exempt from the uniform improvement clause. Aesthetic-based landscaping. This includes installation of hedges along parking pads, irrigation, minor facade repairs, driveway parking pad, and walkway repairs or replacement. To learn more about this grant and other grants, click on the Community Services tab on our website, wellingtonfl.gov. The effects of white fly are felt all over Wellington. Take a look at this hedge. At first glance, it looks pretty healthy, but take a closer look and you can see clear signs of a white fly infestation. In this video, we will give you expert advice on how to manage this tiny menace. Early detection or prevention is a key to managing this insect pest and saving your plants and trees from significant damage. First, decide whether you want to use chemicals, a natural method, or a combination. Each one has its pros and cons. Chemical treatment options for hedges include drenching hedge roots with systemic insecticides specially formulated for killing insects like whitefly. In the case of large trees, a trunk drench or injection method may be in order. These are good options because whenever you spray insecticide through the air, you run the risk of killing beneficial insects. I prefer to use a systemic drench that is taken up and absorbed through the plant and it only kills the bugs that actually feed on it. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions. If there's a severe infestation on a hedge, then a contact insecticide on the foliage can be used along with the root drench. If you opt for chemical treatments, experts say rotation is key. It's important not to use the same chemical over and over again so insects like the whitefly don't build up a resistance to it. For a more natural approach, Ryan recommends using horticultural oils or soaps. Just spray the solution onto your plants, focusing on the underside of the leaves. Since the effects are only temporary, this will need to be repeated on later infestations. Make sure you do this on a cool day to keep leaves from scorching in the sun. 
At the village, we use a variety of products and treatment methods, each one being more appropriate for a certain plant or tree. Catching the infestation early or using preventative applications on highly susceptible plants makes it easier to avoid unsightly damage. We've been dealing with whiteflies since 2005-2006, so the insect is here to stay. A more cost-effective solution might be to simply remove your ficus hedges and replace them with a shrub that's less susceptible. So what if your hedge is already beyond repair or you don't want to continuously spray, drench, or wash? In our next video, we'll give you some options for replacing your ficus with shrubs that are much easier to maintain. We'll also tell you about a new grant for homeowners that will help offset the costs. For our great hometown, I'm Liz Nunez. In our last video, we showed you how to treat your hedges once you detect a whitefly infestation. In this one, we'll give you more permanent options for keeping the whitefly out of your yard. Most people think that because they have whitefly on their hedges, they're just going to have to spray forever. But there's a more permanent way to deal with this. When spraying and dousing just aren't cutting it, maybe it's time for you to rethink your whitefly combat strategy. You spend all this time and money spraying to try to keep the whitefly off your hedges, or try to revive the damaged ones when you could simply remove them and replace them with something less susceptible. Brian suggests replacing those sickly hedges with a hardier species that requires less maintenance. This is especially a good idea if the shrubs have already been significantly damaged or just need to be replaced due to age. According to Brian, your best bet for hardy species are anise, cocoa plum, myrcene, and Jamaican caper. All of these options are hardy, and require less maintenance than ficus shrubs. If you own a home along one of the village's major thoroughfares, you might even qualify for a grant to help offset the cost of replacing those dying hedges. While there might be an upfront cost to replacing your ficus hedges, it should pay for itself over the next couple of years and reduce maintenance costs. If you're looking for options to replace your hedges, look no further than Wellington's newest Arboretum, located right next to the dog park on Greenbrier Boulevard. For our great hometown, I'm Liz Nunez. Did you know that at least half of the hedges along the village's major thoroughfares have been affected by whitefly? These tiny pests mean big trouble for your yard and our village's good looks. Is your home located along one of the village's major thoroughfares? If so, you could qualify for this grant to restore your home's curb appeal. Up to $500 are available for property owners to remove and replace dying hedges and install irrigation for maintenance. There are requirements. Applicants must provide a minimum of 50% match in funds. The property must be located along one of these major thoroughfares. Aero Club Drive, Big Blue Trace, Binks Forest Drive, Burkdale Drive, Fairlane Farms Road, Forest Hill Boulevard, Greenbrier Boulevard, Greenview Shores Boulevard, Lake Worth Road, Paddock Drive west of Big Blue Trace, Pearson Road, South Shore Boulevard, and Wellington Trace. To learn more about this grant, including requirements, eligible activities, and a timeline, click on the Community Services tab on our website, wellingtonfl.gov.